welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, you know it's been a really busy week this week so this video may be squeezing in to make it to Thursday, maybe not. On Sunday the wife, uh, you know the boss lady there, she decided that uh, she should give me a few opportunities to do a few exciting things. About two months ago I took all the carpet out of the last bedroom that had carpet in it and I put uh, laminated flooring in the closets in the, in the, you know, in the bedroom there. But unfortunately there was still just one closet left that had carpet on the floor. It was a walk-in closet about 60 square feet and uh, so Sunday she decided to give me the opportunity to floor that closet and so we went down to home you know home desk spot there and got some laminated flooring and I had figured it up 60 square feet three boxes are exactly 60 square feet I thought well 10% waste I better get four so I got four and you know how that worked out I got down to the last bit I hadn't even opened that last box yet I needed a piece obviously it was uh, 20 24 inches long and three inches wide so I had to open that last box to cut that much of a piece <laughs> out of the stuff there. That's hard on a cheap guy, you know. But uh, there you go. And uh, there's always something crazy going on with Daisy around here. And I, I don't know if it was the boss lady or the granddaughter, but I'm pretty sure it was the boss lady decided to buy some dog cookies. Now, yeah, they got cookies for dogs and ice cream for dogs. And, and the, and the cookies, they got little little bones on them. I think you can see that. And uh, I noted, I, I, I gave one to Daisy because she was uh, wanting my energy bar. And I have the smell of it. And I thought, that smells just like an Oreo. And so then uh, I took a bite of it. And it tastes just like an Oreo. And I hadn't had one of the chocolate ones yet, but we're going to try it. Now that one tastes like a chocolate Oreo. I'm trusting these guys didn't put any chocolate in here. I don't know. These are regular cream cookies. Don't let anybody kid you. Of course they'll cost a little bit more than people cookies. And I think what the deal is is they figure that your average normal person is not about to eat anything that says it's dog food. Well, they didn't count on me, you know. So, I'm telling you, give your dog a vanilla Oreo. Don't give them the chocolate ones, because chocolate is supposed to be bad for dogs. But, hey, that's what I ate right there. That You, you can fool me. That was an, uh, just the same thing, you know. And, uh, anyway, talking about dogs and I imagine it's when you was a kid you had a dog or cat follow you home. A lot of kids did, you know, and they wanted to keep it. Well, this right here followed me home. A little Smith & Wesson toy. It's a uh, Smith & Wesson S9, I mean SD9VE. I mean, it's a 9mm value edition. And uh, from the looks of it, I mean, this is your typical Glock breakdown thing. And when you pull the trigger it, it feels kind of gritty and crunchy like a Glock trigger, not at all like a Smith & Wesson trigger. So, and then I looked at the sight and it's got a plastic sight so I thought well I'm going to replace the trigger and I'm going to replace the sight with an uh, M&P sight, you know Smith & Wesson M&P sight. So I got them ordered and uh, but to do the sight I need something to push the sight off. Now I know I can stick it in a vise and hammer on it and you know, with a brass rod and stuff, but why not do it right? So that's what today's video is about. We're going to make a sight pusher. It's a pretty simple tool and uh, shouldn't take very long to do. And I think maybe we can make it interesting. And who knows, at the end of the video, we might have Bubba or somebody, you know. So let's get on with it. As I've said before, all projects start on the van side. This time, whoa, I dropped my gun.
This time though, I have an actual drawing of how things are going to look and the sizes. Now the stuff down here, I didn't put a size on it yet because I got to compare a couple of slides to how things look once I start making a little progress and then I'll size that according to what I think is needed. So I'll square this thing up in the uh, in the middle of an end mill and then start drilling holes and such. I cut this thing an inch and an eighth over there on the bandsaw and I'm going to try to square it up here because I, everybody knows my bandsaw doesn't cut real straight so we'll probably sort of be straightish and uh, somewhere one inchish kind of. I'm not holding myself any particular tolerance on that. Looks like it's cutting pretty good. We'll bring you guys back after a bit, you know. Just take a little nap. Alright, so this being square tubing, it was welded together. And you can see the weld seam back there. And I'm going to machine that out so that the inside of it is just smooth all the way around. And the, uh, the width of the thing is going to be about an inch and a tenth, a little bit under you know maybe 10 15 thousandths under so that's close enough as long as you know I didn't care much about how above an inch much above an inch it was I just didn't want it to be so thin that I'd lose the strength of the tubing so anyway I'm gonna machine out that little lump seam whatever okay so I cut the little weld seam out and we've got a relatively smooth surface in there now and We'll continue on to make holes for the bolts and such, and I'll have to make the little slider piece, the pusher piece that goes across. So, still a lot to do. I had to go back and redo this thing, you know, get a light here. I discovered that it wasn't really square, and what gave me my clue was when I machined this surface right here, I looked at the side, and the little booger was touching right here on the tool and on the other side here the tool was actually touching down here so that meant it had to be cocked like that so I went back with the machinist uh, uh, square and shined my light through there until I got everything really nice and of course we're a lot closer to one inch thickness now so now that I know that it, at least that it's more properly square, we'll go on with the next step. Well, I've determined what I think would be a good spot to measure to to have a reasonable thickness of metal. And that's going to be down right about there. So, mark on this side. It's easier just to run the... <laughs> Alright. Well, today is Sunday. I've been a little bit since I worked on this the last time. And, uh, in fact, it's the second Sunday of the month. That means I went shooting the steel challenge today. And I'll tell you what, the, the month before this, when I shot, I was 20 seconds slower than the previous month. And that was disturbing. When I went to shoot today, I was 20 seconds slower than last month. That's a 40 second slowdown in in a couple of months. And I, the only thing I can figure is it's caused by lack of practice. 2012, I uh, I had plenty of practice in 2012 because I went every day, at least an hour. Shot 110 rounds a day, not much, you know, not anything by, you know, the standards of the pros. But it was definitely something. I hope there would be a line between these anyway. Yeah, I'm going to have to move it up just a little bit. See what happens now. Oh, that was too far over. 
All right. And uh, this way. There we go. That's right between them. Okay. Anyway, so I guess what I need to do is is start to uh, practice at least two or three days a week. Which means I may cut back on the video stuff because you don't have time to do everything in the world. Now this guy, he's going to go through holes right across there, right in line with that uh, mark I made. Unless I stand here and talk myself into moving it up a little higher. Uh, and I may do that. But anyway, I may put my dedication into practicing and not so much YouTube videos, I can tell you that. Anyway, I'm going to put you guys to sleep while I think on whether I made that mark in the right spot. Alright, so I moved that little booger a quarter of an inch further towards what's going to be the top because I didn't like, uh, after looking at it, I didn't like where it was at. So, we'll try to get it lined up here. I think that looks like it's very close to setting in that hole. So let's see. lined up with the hole before it is now but anyway to make a long story short I'm going to sell you guys down the river and we're going to put less less time into videos and more time into practicing at the range and I don't know that it'll change the you know the dates the videos come out any or not because I I could just quit spend as much time sitting on my can and just uh, devote it, you know, a little, a little extra here and there that I'm spending web surfing. You know, I waste a lot of time web surfing. I come by, and, oh, sorry about kicking the, the camera. I came by an interesting little bit of information the other day. A guy says, uh, if you own a pistol, you can rob a bank. But if you own a bank, you can rob everybody. I'm thinking, you know, obviously, white collar crimes got all the benefits. Back to sleep. Now, the bolt that I was sold there is supposed to be a 3 8 inch bolt. And I'm going to use a letter U drill bit to drill the hole because I think that's just really close to being the exact size of a 3 8 uh, bolt. Not 3 8 of an inch, of course, but near to the size of the bolt. So that's what we're going to work on here. We're going to, we're going to cut it right through. running a little bit fast for that size drill bit but I'm so lazy I have a hard time changing the belts what is it oh stuck on the drill bit all right so there let's see if the bolt will go in it let's give it a try a little bit tight I may wind up, you see it's, it's tight. I may have to get closer to 3 8 Oh well, we'll drill the other side and I'll let you guys sleep while I drill around on this a while and then I'll wake you up to see what happened. Well, I went ahead and went with 3 8 and that, that did the job just fine. And everything's gonna work out right. Of course, I'll put 
one of these washers down here but now to go on with the little block that's going to be right here it'll be what actually pushes the sight on or off I'll have one straight edge on it and one angled edge for those sights that are on an angle so I guess I need to pick out the piece of metal to make that out of and we'll get over to the milling machine and make it fit all right this is exactly how the thing will move from one side to the other to push the sight of course I'll get something a little better in the way of a uh, wrench than, than an open-end thing here but uh, so this is a metric adjustable wrench anyway it's not good to use it on inch bolts but that's that's how she's going to move now then I need to come down and mill this part to have the little pusher section hanging down and I need to bring the width back just a little bit so that it doesn't hang out on either side of that guy there so I suppose we're up to milling that part and then I'll have to come up with the little blocks that go down in here so that they'll be on either side of the slide it will fit in here like this and I'll have to you know set it up on a block to make it work all right so back to sleep and I'll bring you around to look at it again in a minute okay <clears throat> so I've measured a side or two and uh, from you know the width of the slot they're in and such looks like about two hundred thousandths should be about right so this thing's three quarters of an inch thick so I'm going to cut 275 thousandths off each side and I think it was Mr. Pete that said you need to have a, a sanity check that's what these two little marks here are yeah, that's measured over if I get past those I've cut it too thin so that and the DRO together I should be able to get right dead on two hundred thousandths and it'll be two hundred thousandths deep you know so I've got a, a little thing sticking up that's going to be two hundred thousandths tall and two hundred thousandths thick so you know uh, no use me boring you with cutting it so just hang loose trying to round the corners because this uh, this square tubing is not totally square in the corners on the inside or the outside it's round so it's got a bit of a radius there that I'm going to get as close to as I can and that happens to be the only corner around the end mill that I have so that's going to be about as good as I can do right there check see how well it fits everything all right so see if I can get this in the camera that's about how close it gets into the corner there not uh, not really as far as I had wanted it to but that's how far it's going right there so I guess I guess that's just the way it'll be I don't have uh, any more corn around the end mills, although I could probably shape that some myself and get a little bit closer. 
but I think probably that'll be close enough now this is just very near to fitting just right into the corner I discovered that I need about a quarter inch longer bolt because I want washers behind here and when I get it down to the lock portion on the nut there's not enough room for washers not really unless they were a lot thinner than anything I have so back to redneck supply for a little bit longer bolt I've got still got to make the spacers to go in here and the spacer to go in the bottom of this thing so let me get it all together and we'll come back with that well lots of things I've done off camera since you guys were watching me now this is the piece that's going to do the actual pushing across set like that this is the second one that I made because I messed up the first one I'll put them side to side and you tell me if you see don't see where I messed them up <laughs> yeah this thing should have been uh, running this way like this one so bad go <laughs> anyway I've made a couple of little pieces here to just shove the thing, hold the, uh, clamp the slide in, and the little piece, the little block for it to rest on on the bottom. Now these two aren't entirely finished because I need to cut a little bit off of the bottom of them to make a little step so that when they come up against the slide you can see how this ridge here is on both sides and this is recessed. Well, I want the thing to fit right against it up here near the top not pushing it on the bottom so I'm going to have to cut a little a little bit of a, a spot in uh, in these guys here I just, just a little piece there to make it sort of L shaped and I'm going to do that off camera as well oh one thing important happened While I was trying to use the quarter 20 tap to put a hole in the frame of the thing, not to put a hole, but thread a hole in the frame of it here, I was using this uh, genuine made in China tap handle and the little bugger just broke. And you can see right there, wiped it out. The Chinesium didn't hold up. I thought before I finished those things up that I would just stop for a little preview here and uh, this is how it's going to look pushing a rear sight off of it you can see the I think you can see the, the little tooth down there lined up with the side of the sight let me turn it around this way so you can see it from this side Now then I'll zoom in a little bit. Get this thing out of the way. We always get something in the way. Alright, now then. You can see that the little tongue down there comes right up against the sight. And then it'll push it sideways. Right off of there. Or if I wanted to start on the other side, I could push it the other way just as well so all right now then I'll get down to cutting a little a little relief in the bottom of each one of those and uh, and we'll we'll get set up for painting it I'll have to degrease the little booger but back out with this zoom gives you an idea of what we're making all right, this time I'm not going to put my little enclosure together. I'm just going to spray it in this bucket. And I can just dump the bucket out in the yard if it's got a whole lot of stuff in it. So we'll just powder coat it in that little basket and then go shove it in the oven. And so we'll have something that says loving like nothing from the oven. Or something like that. All right. Charged up good. Bring some goody on it. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. I wonder if it got on the other side. I don't know way to find out. Covers pretty good, whether you can see the spot or not. Probably wasting a lot of powder. All right, let's go and stick in the oven. That's not much wasted powder at all, not really. So we'll uh, we've got it in the oven, and we'll wait for a little while till it's. Gets created a little bit. I'll give you a, a look at it. I don't know that you can see it terribly well in there, but when it gets real shiny, <clears throat> that means the stuff's melting, and I need to set the timer for about another 20 minutes at that point. So, yeah, if I do it right, you can sort of see what's in there. Just got it suspended in the oven and it looks pretty shiny to me right now so I'm going to set the timer for 20 minutes and by golly it's already on 20 minutes so there we go we'll leave it in like in there like that for 20 more minutes and when we pull it out it ought to be a really nice paint job Here's our device, properly powder coated and assembled. Here's the uh, new sight that's going to go in. This one's a steel sight. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this little guy, slide him into here, where he's about the middle of everything. And, well, just to make sure I don't scratch it, I'll put a business card in here. May have to tear it in half, I guess. You guys, I'll let you sleep a second while I find something to cut this thing in half. Okay, I cut that business card in half. And now it's back to business. Sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so anyway, we're going to slide this uh, slide into here. A little piece of business card on each side to keep it uh, from getting skinned up. And that should, uh, let me get the light here and see if I'm in the center of the site. No, i got to come back a little bit. Just about there. I think that's where it's at. And uh, we will push it across. Now this is totally live and unrehearsed, so you may see a couple of little jumps in the video where I cut pieces out. <laughs> but anyway, there we are. We're nice and tight, and we're going to try to crank this little booger across and uh, push the side off, which it should do pretty well. Need it to be just a little bit taller. All right, so now then, we're gonna get right back to squeezing it out of there.
keep right on going. The vice shakes around a bit, so that means that the video is going to shake around a little bit. I think that pushed it free because it got a lot easier. I should have got a little ratchet wrench to go on here. That would have been a lot better, a lot faster, but I didn't. So we got her off. Well, I'll have to take it out of there. There's the uh, the plastic site. Now then, I'll have to take stock of my situation here and then push the uh, the steel side in. So I'm gonna let you guys sleep a minute. All right. <clears throat> so. I need more room in there for the slide to go one side or the other <coughs> when I start pushing in the sight. So I have another piece here. It's thinner. Takes up less room, of course, being thinner. And we'll put it right over here on this side. And that will give us more room for the slide to be off, offset to one side. Now you might think, wow, that's clever. Well, no, I made two of them because I made one and decided, no, that's not right. So I went and made another one. No planning involved. Sorry. <coughs> Wish I was that smart, but it wasn't. Anyway, we'll screw this little booger in. And... He doesn't really have to be all that tight because all he's doing is just sitting there and getting pushed on. Alright, so get my little shims for the bottom. Stick them up into here. And I guess this guy should be back on the other side. So that's where we're going to have the extra room. Now I've got this nice ratcheting uh, box in wrench here that I went out and picked up while y'all were sleeping. You know the big channels rehearse all this stuff and they do it you know before they make the video of it. So it looks pretty slick you know and the, their videos are smooth and everything comes off well. Me I, I just record it as I'm doing it and unfortunately then you guys get to see all my mistakes and my miscalculations and one thing or another which I guess is not terribly impressive you know now, now what I'm holding this bolt here on with is there's a little let me roll it around roll pin in there I was going to let the the nylon in the in the lock nut hold it but this bolt was about a quarter inch too short and when I got through 
powder coating this or rather while it was in the oven I ran down to the Redneck Supply and they were already closed so that wasn't very impressive for me and uh, that being the case well I had to come back and give it some thought and I decided I would just go ahead and just use what I had there now let me see if I can get this high enough here I guess the height isn't too big of a problem going on as it is when you're coming off let's go ahead and cram in a little bit of something there to keep it clean and then let's uh, do the same for this side and crank in our clamps so that it will hold still for me make sure I'm lined up good it looks like I should be about no I'm not quite lined up back just a little bit well there's a problem right there I'm still not far enough over back to sleep all right so what I did <clears throat> was I took my little plastic hammer and I got the sight started going in okay and uh, so then we can take this, uh, whoops, going the wrong way here on the wrench. We can take this little wrench and gently push the sight right on over into the, into the spot. Whoops. I don't want to have to put a whole lot of force on it. Because I've seen people damage their, uh, their, their slide give it a better bite in the vise. This vise has got rubber jaws and they're they're moving around on me. There. That'll still keep you with the same the same bird's eye view of everything. Alright, so a little more tightening. Sorry about that. I can see and you can't. No sign of any burrs or anything, so it's going in there okay. kind of hard to see whether you're halfway in or all the way not there yet So, let's take it out <clears throat> and see if it looks like it's in the middle. I 
I think that my pushing tool here is just a little bit too wide. I probably need to cut about a, may have to cut about a quarter inch off of it. But that looks to me like, let's find where the camera's at. That looks to me like this pretty well in the center of everything. And what I'll do is I'll take this whole rig out to the range and I'll fire a few shots. And if, if it's going left or right, I'll just move the sight over to, to match. And it it made a little ding in the in the paint there on the site. You can see the little silver spot. Um, where is it here? Right there. But a little bit of something black, like paint, will fix that. Okay, folks. Uh, so you've seen it. That's the uh, the homemade redneck sight pusher, and uh, it seems to have worked out all right. At least it pushes the sight in. That sight was pretty tight after it got started going in there. So we'll bring an end to this video. I don't know if uh, if Bubba or somebody's around. They all, may all be on vacation or off coon hunting or something. So we'll just have to wait and see. But in the meantime, remember this little bit of wise saying here this is supposedly an old chinese proverb and it is live now it's later than you think and that's that's probably good advice all right let's go on and see if there's anything left boudreaux uh got a jury summons and uh so he went down to the courthouse you know and he was sitting there on the jury panel there where they were selecting the jurors and and the judge says, well, he says, is, is there anybody that for some reason or other can't serve on this jury? And Boudreaux raises his hand up and the judge says, uh, Mr. Boudreaux, what, what's your reason for not being able to serve on the jury? And Boudreaux says, well, oh, I tell you for sure, judge, he says, I, I need to go into work. The judge says, well, he says, uh, Mr. Boudreaux, can't they do that job without you? Well, yes, Judge, he says, and that's the problem, he says. I don't want him to find that out. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.